Rebecca says that every complete story not only has to have a story in mind as its structure, but also has to be seen from four different angles as well. You can't just have one of them and have a complete grand argument story. Now, you, you can have a story just by having a, a portion, just by showing this view of looking at the mind from the outside in. That's fine. That's called the objective view. It's objective because we're not actually involved. We're just looking at it from the outside looking in. So the objective view is fine if you just want to tell a smaller story. But the audience is capable of understanding a larger argument. In fact, they want to look at the story three other ways as well to get the biggest argument that they can hold in their heads at one time and see the big picture without losing sight of the little details. Imagine now that we take this overview, this objective story, and we hold out that story mind and look at it and say, alas, poor mind, I knew it, Horatio. Look at that thing. It's like looking at a brain. You can watch this electron, this neutron fire, neutron, <laughs> this neuron fire, that neuron fire. You can watch the chemical reactions in it that cause the emotions, but you don't feel the emotions. You might care about them. Oh, that brain is suffering. Oh, that brain is happy. And you can tell this by watching it logistically. That's kind of like the view of a general on a hill watching a battle. And in stories, the general watches the dramatic battle happening down below in the valley. The general can see what's going well, what isn't going well. All the strategies from both sides from this high view. The ambush that's lying around the corner, the thrust that's coming up against the flank. But from this point of view, the general's not really involved other than caring about the outcome because he can't really identify the individual soldiers by name as to people that he knows, human beings. Instead, he sees them by function. There's the foot soldier, there's the um, cavalry soldier, there's the artillery, there's the coward hunkering down in the bushes and huddling to stay out of harm's way. There's perhaps the cook. There's the enemy general uh, up on the other hill. Over here is the commander of the enemy forces leading a charge. All of that's visible. And similarly, in stories, when we look at them from a distance, from the objective view, from our first point of view, we can see the characters as antagonist, protagonist, sidekick, skeptic, reason, emotion. Uh, these are characters that we see from that standpoint of the general on the hill. We only get so much information, though. We get the overview, but we don't understand what it's really like to be in the story. But what if we could zoom down into the shoes of one of the soldiers on the field and experience the story firsthand from there? While we lose something, no longer can we see the big perspective. No longer can we see what the, where the ambush is around the, uh, the hill or what the uh, enemy is doing. We can only see what's going on right around us with any clarity. And the farther away it is, the harder it is to understand what's really going on. Dramatic explosions are going off all over the place. And all we want to do is fulfill our function in the big picture as best we can and get out of there alive. But now we're involved. Now we really feel it when the ground shakes from an explosion and the blast goes off next to us and deafens us. And we see the people around us being blown to bits. We really care. That's the most passionate view of the story. Just like the objective view is perhaps the most dispassionate, even though you care about what's going on, you're not involved. But in terms of personal passion, the main character is the soldier in whose shoes you're standing. Now, as mentioned earlier, with empathy and sympathy, it might just be the character that you most care about, but you care about them in a personal way, by name, by personality, who they are. You care about this character with all your heart. The story, for you, revolves around that character. But you still have this other view, creating kind of a parallax, creating kind of a 3D image on the story. On the one hand, you see the trouble the main character is walking into. On the other hand, you stand in the main character's shoes and see why they're not being stupid to run into that trouble. They just don't see it coming. They can't from where they are. So we get this wide view and that interview. That's two, and that's what a lot of authors stop at. They just say, let me be very personal with my main character and stand in their shoes, and also let me take a big view of the big picture and describe what's going on that the main character can't see. There's two more that Dramatica calls for. 